What's up motorheads and welcome back to Gearbox Pizza. Today, the world of electric performance SUVs has gotten just a touch more crowded and we for one welcome the addition of this handsome British Chinese rocket. All right, so we got something pretty stunning to look at today. Yep, it is a brand new hyper SUV that not only looks amazing, it's got the numbers to back it up. Oh, and believe it or not, it's probably a little bit cheaper than you think. Yep, Lotus, the long and storied brand that sort of defines British motorsport, right? Well, sort of. You see, and I think I may have known this, but I clearly forgot that Lotus is actually a Chinese company now, sort of. So back in 2017, Geely, a big time Chinese multinational conglomerate, became the majority owner of Lotus. Yeah, I don't know, look. I know this is just the way the world is going, and Lotus is far from the only storied brand to have foreign owners, but I just sort of miss the days where British cars were British and Italian cars were Italian, yada yada, I mean, you know what I mean. But, and this is a big time but, without Geely floating the bill, I doubt Lotus would have been able to get this sweetheart of an SUV going, so hey, maybe this is all for the best. All right, so there's going to be three trims of this thing. The base version, just called the Elettra, as well as the Elettra S will have one giant single motor making 603 horsepower and 710 newton meters of torque. Top speed for these is said to be an even 160 miles an hour and 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 0 to 62 miles per hour comes in at a pretty conservative 4.5 seconds. And I don't know, with these numbers it sort of feels like this might be a touch quicker than what they're claiming but hey, I like the whole under promise over delivered thing, right? Anyhow, battery wise, we're looking at a pretty robust 112 kilowatt hours, which lets this thing just kind of crush it in the range department. Yep, Lotus is claiming a range of 373 miles. Now we're talking. All right, but I don't know. It really feels like the new baseline for range these days is about 300 miles, right? I mean, anything less just sort of feels a little underwhelming, and anything more just kind of feels like bonus. So good on you, Lotus, if these range numbers are indeed correct. Okay, so what about the fast one you say? Well, they're calling it the Electre R and it adds a second motor and just gobs the power. How much you say? Check it, 905 horsepower and 985 newton meters of torque. Crazy, I mean, that's enough to shuffle this guy to 62 miles an hour in just under three seconds. Top speed's also improved, albeit slightly at 165 miles an hour also. The only downside to all this power, well, it's range range and weight, right? Well, they're sort of related. Anyways, the good news here is that it's still pretty solid with Lotus saying that the fast one's still gonna go 304 miles on a full charge. And speaking of charging, here we have the obligatory and sort of random charging numbers. Lotus is claiming 10% to 80% charge can be had in as little as 20 minutes, which seems pretty fast. Although I sort of see these numbers reported on all different kinds of ranges. I mean, sometimes it's 20% to 80%, sometimes it's 10% to 90% and so on. I mean, just like we pretty much all agreed on, you know, zero to 60 or 62 in the quarter mile, that's how you define acceleration. Can we just all agree on percentage range for charging? So it's just gonna be so much easier to compare charging speeds between cars. Let's make it happen. All right, so moving on. So Lotus is sort of making a big deal about their brand new operating system. It's called Lotus Hyper OS, and believe it or not, it's built on the Unreal Engine, which if you're not familiar, it's sort of this amazing, just mega 3D real-time system. There's a big 15-inch OLED right there in the middle, and apparently it's Dolby Atmos certified? What? I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me, but I sort of just prefer a simpler UI. I mean, it's impressive and all sorts of blingy, but why? I mean, just make something easy and simple to use. I mean, you might have first seen this trend with that new Hummer EV with all sorts of fancy and overdone graphics. I mean, I don't really need to be enveloped in a chromatic and cinematic journey just to swap driving modes. And look, most of the time, I just wanna be able to turn the air on without a laser light show. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little old school. I mean, what do you guys think of this trend? I mean, I'm actually really curious. Just leave a comment. Is this good? I don't know. Okay, so now it comes to the size of this thing. And well, it sort of looks just about right. I mean, it's big enough to be a bona fide SUV, but small enough to actually still be sort of sporty. No three rows of seat, just the two. And there's gonna be a four seat option as part of the executive seat pack as well. 
So, all good so far, for the most part, right? I mean, it's seriously quick and handsome, and you'll most likely have the only one in the neighborhood. So there's that, which to me is a good thing. So, what is this thing gonna cost? If you don't already know, I'm curious what you think this thing might cost. I mean, the specs are all great, the styling's a home run, range is excellent, so how much? Well, pricing's gonna be specific per market, but it looks like it's gonna start at around 95 grand. Yeah, is that more or less what you thought, maybe? Look, on one hand, if you believe this and Lotus to be a quote-unquote exotic, well, then it's sort of a budget hyper SUV. If you compare this to the Germans, well, maybe it's a touch expensive, so it's kind of hard to say, and I'm sort of going back and forth. Deliveries are gonna happen first in eight key European markets, with deliveries to the rest of the world starting sometime in 2024. All right, so bottom line, Personally, I dig the styling big time, but is it worth the cash? And on one hand, if you compare this to like the new Fisker Ocean, well, it kind of looks expensive, but compared to things like the new Ferrari SUV or that Aston Martin SUV, kind of looks like a bargain. 